Language Tool or Grammarly. Which is the best writing assistant for you? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins and welcome to the Become a Writer Today channel. So I've tried and tested the free and basic versions of Language Tool and Grammarly. I've used them to check my work and to check the work of other writers. And in this video, I'm gonna profile what exactly these tools do, how they differ for each other, and help you understand which is right for your writing needs. If you find the video review helpful, let me know in the comment section below. And to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now let's dive in. One of the great things about Grammarly is that it's free to use. So basically, if you visit Grammarly.com, you can install the plugin to your browser of choice, and then you get access to the Grammar Checker, the Spelling Checker, and also now to Grammarly Go, which is its AI assistant, and that's all free. Then when you're ready and you want some additional grammar checks, some spelling checks, the ability to apply full sentence rewrites at a click, a plagiarism checker, and some context behind your mistakes, you can upgrade to a premium subscription. Now, usually this premium subscription costs $30 per month. However, you can save money if Grammarly are running a promotion, or if you pay for an annual subscription, you can pay $12 per month. I also have a Grammarly discount, meaning I earn a small commission if you use it, and I'll put a link to that in the notes below this review. You can also take out a Grammarly business subscription. I won't focus too much on that in this video, but that starts at $12, or excuse me, $15 per month per user if you take on an annual subscription. And it basically does everything that the Grammarly premium version does, except you can give secure access to team members. If you're interested in Grammarly business, I have another video on the channel where I go into more detail about what exactly it does and who it's for. Like Grammarly, Language Tool is free to try. So you can visit languagetool.org and you can paste in some text and immediately start to use it to correct and paraphrase your work. And you can also install Language Tool for your operating system. So you can see here there's a version available for Mac OS, as well as plugins for Mail, Slack, Word, Notes, and so on. You are of course limited by what you can do with Language Tool with the free version. So you're gonna to need to take out a premium subscription, which is what I did for this video. That's gonna cost you a relatively affordable $4 per month if you take out a subscription for two years. In other words, you're getting a discount if you take out an annual subscription. You are of course limited by what you can do with the free version of Language Tool. So when you're ready, you can take out a premium subscription. That starts at $4.99 per month. You can avail of various discounts if you decide to pay annually or even more than annually. And when you take out a premium subscription, you get access to enhanced grammar and punctuation checks, as well as a style guide and the add-ons that it provides. And you also get access to its AI integration too, which I'll show you in this video. Now there is a version of language tool for teams that starts at just under $10 per month. Basically it does everything that premium does, except you have a team style guide and a team dictionary. In other words, you can share access to all of your rules, style, and custom terms with other people in your company. I won't focus too much on that in this video, but suffice to say, it pretty much does everything the premium version does. It's just meant for collaboration. So for the purposes of this comparison, I wrote a 600 plus word article. The article is all about what to work on next, and it's packed full of grammar and spelling errors. I pasted the article into app.grammarly.com, and it immediately flags the critical grammar and spelling errors in red as part of the correctness report. And then it flagged some phrases and sentences that are a little bit unclear or ambiguous in blue. There are some additional reports relating to engagement and delivery, which I can review as well. But suffice to say, if you're looking to publish something quickly, focus on what's in red first before moving on to what's in blue, that is the clarity report. Now, what I like about Grammarly is that if I'm ever uh, unsure about why it's proposing a suggestion, I can click and learn more and it'll give me some additional examples as part of the Grammarly premium subscription. So in other words, I can improve my English writing skills by editing some of my own work rather than simply reading a grammar book. I can use language tool much like Grammarly. So it has a web editor and I can import a Word document or I can simply paste articles or text from my clipboard and language tool will scan it for grammar errors. So I've gone ahead and pasted in the article that I wrote that's packed full of critical grammar and spelling errors. And you can see WordTune, much like Grammarly, will take a few seconds to scan it and then it'll propose suggestions on the right hand sidebar. And it'll also give me a score. So let's compare Grammarly and language tool and see how they got on. On the left hand side, I have Grammarly. You can see it scored my work 89 out of 100, which is a pretty good score. 
But it's also said that there are 18 critical grammar and spelling errors which I should review. And I have an option for applying multiple suggestions at once at a click. And then there are some additional suggestions related to clarity. So in other words, there are 30 different suggestions for me to review, 18 of which are critical. And I could probably edit this in one to two minutes. Now, if I go over to language tool, you can see it scored my work 92 out of 100. Arguably the scores for, from both tools are a little bit arbitrary. So let's turn on picky mode and see if the score differs. And when I turn on picky mode, you can see that the score remains at 92, but it's flagged a number of additional suggestions. That said, it has not caught as many as Grammarly. So while it has picked up on the critical grammar and spelling errors, it's probably not going to help me as much with the style of my work. So let me show you an example. Language tool caught the same issue. And in fact, it's caught the same issues as Grammarly pertaining to grammar and spelling errors. However, Grammarly has also caught some additional issues that language tool overlooks. So for example, it's never a good idea to write in a passive voice because it's a little bit boring to readers. There are a few exceptions if you're an academic or journalist, but generally best avoid it. My review ranked and I was invited into their affiliate program. So Grammarly has flagged this as an instance of the passive voice that I should change. This isn't something that has been flagged by language tool. Now it's not critical and it's not gonna stop me publishing my work, but my work would read better if I changed instances of the passive voice. To be fair, the language tools style checker did catch or propose some suggestions. So I wrote, even if you don't care about NFTs, find something you want to learn about. And language tool has said that I could reword this as, even if you aren't concerned about, and this isn't really a suggestion that Grammarly has proposed. They're comparable as grammar and spelling checkers, but Grammarly is just faster to use because you can apply multiple suggestions at once. And also because it will catch some additional style errors or style issues that you can review, some of which language tool overlooked. I also liked that Grammarly provides additional context behind any of the issues. So I can click and learn more to get more examples about why this is a potential grammar or spelling error. And language tool doesn't have this level of detail built into it. Grammarly Go can take the editing process one step further. Now this feature is still in beta, so I would expect it to improve over time. But basically it uses AI to scan your work and come up with suggestions for improvements. So as an example, I can identify gaps, I can pick out my main points, and I can rewrite my work based on my intended tone. But one feature that stood out to me for the purposes of this review is give me ideas for improvements. So when I click on this, Grammarly Go scans through the article, and much like a human editor, it comes up with not one, but three different suggestions. So firstly, it says I should give specific examples of sp specific projects or approaches in the creative industry and add them to the article. I should introduce a step-by-step -step process or checklist, and I should emphasize the importance of balancing passion and practicality when choosing a project to work on next. These are all ideas or themes in the article in question. And this is really helpful for me because I'm getting feedback without necessarily having to go to a human editor. Suffice to say, language tool does not do anything like this yet. I could also use Grammarly Go to identify gaps in the article. So again, this is going well beyond a grammar or spelling checker. So when I click on identify gaps, it's flagged that I mentioned something called Charlie Munger's three rules for investing, but I don't exactly go into detail about what these are. So Grammarly Go has suggested that I make this specific change for my article. Although Language Tool doesn't have anything like Grammarly Go, you can use it for paraphrasing and it's actually really good at it. So simply change from correct to paraphrase. Make sure you have a premium subscription because this is a premium feature only. And then you can highlight specific words, sentences, paragraphs, or even entire sections of your work that you want to paraphrase or revise. This is quite helpful if you like turning articles into emails or social media posts or other pieces of content that you're gonna use elsewhere. And of course, if you're paraphrasing somebody else's work, please do make sure you include the original citation or source so you don't get accidentally accused of plagiarism. So when I changed to paraphrase, I was able to highlight specific sentences and language tool has given me some different suggestions. So I wrote, I spend a lot of time considering what creative and business projects to start next. And Language Tool has suggested I change this to, I spend a lot of time thinking about what creative and business projects I should start. It's not a huge change, but perhaps it does read a little bit better than what I had previously. And there are a number of different suggestions on the right-hand sidebar that I can pick from. If you want to paraphrase more than one sentence, 
you still have to work through your article line by line, highlighting each section as you go and then reviewing the suggestions that Language Tool has proposed. That said, this is a little bit of a time saver. But I did wonder if I'm a little bit faster using an AI tool like ChatGPT instead, because I could paste all of the article in and ask ChatGPT to paraphrase it. So that could be another workaround if you don't want to use a language tool, but you like the grammar checker features that Grammarly offers. As useful as paraphrasing software is, you can now paraphrase much more easily using ChatGPT. So basically you could take a draft of an entire article or sections of an article and give it a prompt like paraphrase this article or paraphrase this section or summarize it and ChatGPT should produce a response that you can use. So you could paraphrase it as simply another article or even as a blog post with headings, subheadings and headlines. And then this will help you during the editing and revising process. So in other words, you could use a grammar checker like Grammarly or just edit the work yourself and then use or combine your workflow with ChatGPT to produce content that you can publish in a variety of different places. It's a real time saver. And it did make me think that this is why Grammarly has rolled out Grammarly Go because they want to enable writers and anybody who works with the written words to rely on AI to save a little bit of time with the paraphrasing process and also to improve the quality of their work. You can use both Language Tool and Grammarly once you install the relevant plugin for your browser. So to show you how this works, I've opened up Gmail in Chrome and pasted in a sample resignation letter that has a typo. So automatically Grammarly or the Grammarly plugin has flagged this as an issue. But if I want to access the Language Tool plugin, I need to look for the floating number not this one here, this is Grammarly. So if I click on this one, it will automatically open it up and then I can access the suggestions from language tool. Grammarly works a little bit differently. Basically it's gonna underline the grammar and spelling errors in red. After all, it is a grammar and spelling checker. And then if I want to revise sections of the email, I can open up Grammarly Go and then I can just basically give it a simple text command. I typed in the prompt, expand this email and it's given me a different option that I could use for my resignation letter, which is a little bit longer. Similarly, I could use Grammarly Go to expand or shorten different sections of the same email or whatever it is that I'm writing or working on. Perhaps the biggest selling point of Language Tool is its support for multiple languages. It supports not one, but 25 different languages. And you can change these when you set up Language Tool or via the settings section. I haven't come across any other grammar checker that supports this many languages. So for context, Grammarly will let you pick between American, British, Canadian, Australian, and Indian English. Whereas with language tool, you can pick from 25 different languages to check for grammar and spelling errors. And you can also change the language of the interface as well. But not only that, you can determine if you want to interpret English as US, British, Canadian, like Grammarly, but you can also review German, Portuguese, and Catalan as well. So basically, if you're a non-English speaker and you find yourself alternating between different languages and you want to grammar check your work, then you're going to get a lot of value from this additional functionality inside of Language Tool. Now, Grammarly doesn't have support for 25 languages, but I do understand that they are building support for additional languages outside of English. So that's something to watch out for. If you write a lot of fiction or you use custom words or terms for your company, then you'll find the personal dictionary in Language Tool and Grammarly helpful. Basically, you can add a phrase to your custom dictionary and it'll no longer be flagged as a grammar or spelling error. Works pretty much the same in Grammarly. And you can, of course, export your words and then import them to your custom dictionary of choice. So this is something that I do because I sometimes use uh, terms and phrases that are industry specific and that are sometimes flagged as issues by a typical grammar or spelling checker. Both Grammarly and Language Tool offer support for a style guide. You will need the premium version so basically you can import a style guide uh, into either tool, or you can simply add rules by picking phrases that you want to reword or revise. It works pretty similarly in Grammarly. However, if you're a Grammarly business feature, you will get access to additional rules that you can apply as part of your style guide as well. These basically pertain to common style guides like APA, MLA, and Chicago Manual of Style, and you can set your preference for all of these rules. I was interested to see that Language Tool also has support for a number of applications uh, that I use, uh, including Obsidian, which is a personal knowledge management software that I've profiled extensively on the channel. Uh, alternatively, you can of course just use the web app or the web editor. Grammarly works a little bit differently. So basically you just install the desktop version to your Mac or Windows computer, and then it sits in the background and then it works in any writing application. So basically you don't need to worry about installing a plugin or an add-on anymore. And this is basically how I use Grammarly. 
As an example, this is the writing application Ulysses, which I'm running on my Mac. And because Grammarly is running as a desktop app in the background, I can click on any of these words and phrases to get access to the grammar and spelling mistakes and issues inside of the article in question. So if I wanted to fix these with language tool, and I'm not using one of the supported apps, I need to copy these to my clipboard and bring it across to the web app. So it's probably a little bit faster to edit on your desktop with Grammarly. My takeaway from using the free version of language tool and Grammarly, as well as the premium version, is that language tool is a pretty good grammar checker. It will find and fix more grammar and spelling mistakes than a free grammar or spelling checker, and it'll do more than what comes bundled with your operating system. It's also pretty easy to use, and it's fantastic that it has support for not one, but 25 languages. Grammarly does not do that. It's also pretty affordable too, and a little bit cheaper than Grammarly, and the plugin works relatively well. However, I personally prefer Grammarly as, firstly, it has an AI-powered writing assistant, secondly, it has a plagiarism checker, Thirdly, I can apply full sentence rewrites at a click. And now they've rolled out Grammarly Go, which is a real time saver, and I can use it across any writing application. I also find it easier to use Grammarly on my desktop than language tool. That said, if you are looking for an alternative, or perhaps you want to check work that's not just written in English, then language tool could be one to consider. Now elsewhere on the channel, I do profile Grammarly against some other writing applications, so do check out those videos. And if you have questions about either tool, please let me know in the comment section below this video.